How's it going everybody, Jordan here and in today's video I'm gonna go over the legendary pilgrim set in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Remember, if you like this video please remember to leave a like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Let's get right into it. It's so easy to get caught by enemies in this game and the game invites you into hand to hand combat while the pilgrim set invites you to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey like past games. Being able to walk through a heavily fortified fortress and pick off a leader and each soldier one by one is a quality that can be lost in this game and it's incredibly fun with this particular set. This set bonus for the pilgrim set is a minus 100% adrenaline use for the Shadow of Nynx ability. The Shadow of Nynx ability, if you're not aware, makes you invisible to those around you at the cost of adrenaline. You can only become uninvisible if you someone bumps into you or you bump into them or you attack them with your bow or weapon. One thing I did notice though is that animals have a higher sense of your location and they'll notice you even while you're invisible much sooner and without bumping into you. Utilizing this ability with other assassin abilities and assassin playstyles makes using this legendary set in Assassin's Creed Odyssey refreshing and a welcome change of pace for those of you who are like me and primarily play warrior and hunter playstyles. To top it all off, this legendary set ships with the default version of this game and is easily lootable throughout the world and does not require purchasing from the Helix store. Let me show you how to get each piece of gear in this set. For the Pilgrim's Belt, you're going to want to go to the region of Melis, which is north of Phokis and Attica. If you go to the Ruins of Artemis, synchronized location here, this is the area where you're going to find the Pilgrim Belt. For the Pilgrim Hood, you're going to want to go straight to Athens and Attica. And in this town, just northwest of Attica, you're going to find the Eleusius Testerun. Uh, a lot of the pilgrim gear is found in temples. This is where you find the hood for the set. For the gloves, you're going to want to go to Argolis, which is just southwest of Athens and Attica. In the main city, there's a temple over here called the Acropolis of Argos in the northwest corner of the city. There you're going to find the gloves for the pilgrim set. In order to get the pilgrim chest, you're going to need access to Lacania. In the main city of Sparta is the Temple of Athena where you get the pilgrim chest. And finally, in the southeast region on the island of Macera, you're going to find the pilgrim boots up here in this temple called the Temple of Britomartis. This is where you loot the final item, which is the boots. So as you can see, acquiring this set is incredibly easy and just requires you to go to each one of those points and loot the item and you can start using this for yourself. Let's get into all the builds and tweaks that I use for this particular build. For my primary weapon, I use the Daggers of Cronus. In order to get the Daggers of Cronus, you need to defeat one of the cultist members from the Worshippers of the Bloodline cultist tree. But the reason I use this primary weapon is I like the damage when attacking from behind, and then I engrave it because I'm an assassin with 100% damage but health cap to 25%. I don't want to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat, but if I do with this item, I get a lot of assassin damage and a bit of warrior damage so that I'm able to fend off enemies that I'm not quite able to instantly instantly assassinate. For my secondary weapon, I have the Zephos of the Dionysus sword. I Hopefully I said that again. I love this for the assassination damage, the crit damage, and then the 20% damage with the hero strike ability. The hero strike ability is a big part of this build, and then I engrave it with the 30% damage while full health. How you get this sword is you have to defeat one of the cultists from the Peloponnesian League or the Spartan War Hero Cultist Tree. For the bow, I use the Fang Bow for the assassin damage, the poison damage, and then the base Basic arrows become poison arrows, and then I engrave it with Rush Assassination ability chains to one more enemy. Rush Assassination with this build is incredibly powerful. The reason I use the basic arrows become poison arrows is there is a bit of hunterness to this, and it doesn't deal as much damage as other hunter builds do, or even hybrid builds, but it's enough with multi-shot to be able to help you get out of a situation where you might get caught. All right, for the head, we have assassin damage, damage with daggers, and then what you're gonna notice on primarily all of these pieces is I'm ramping up my crit chance so that I can crit as often as I can with rush assassination and regular assassinations on this build. So that's why I engrave it with 14% crit chance while full health. On the gauntlets, we have assassin damage, adrenaline per hit, and then I engrave it with 7 
7% crit chance. On the chest, we have assassin damage, 35% adrenaline on assassination kill, and then 35% crit damage to increase the damage we do when we do crit. On the waist, we have assassin damage, adrenaline on assassination kill, and again, I engrave it with 7% more crit chance. And on the boots, we have assassin damage, movement speed while crouching, which is nice because when you're using the Shadow of Ninx ability, you're crouching, so it allows you to move quicker. And then I engrave it with 14% crit chance while full health to again, increase that crit chance as high as possible. All right, let's look at the main abilities. Obviously, the number one ability is the Shadow of Ninx ability. You combine that with the stealthiness from Stealth Master and people won't hear you. And as long as you don't bump into them, you'll be able to infinitely walk walk around as many people as you want and walk through places and even loot gear from forts that you may not want to clear. The other main ability is Rush Assassination. Rush Assassination, especially if you add the additional engraving, it allows you to clear a leader and all four of his guards all at once, which is really wonderful. Mix that with Critical Assassinations and Hero Strike. What I do is I use Hero Strike on the last chain if there's an additional group of people, and it almost counts like an additional chain because you can most of the time one hit shot people with this hero strike and then I use vanish here because I want the ability if I do get caught and I'm unable to maneuver my way out of the scenario that using vanish allows me to run away and become invisible again so that I can re-engage my enemies using assassin abilities. I have an alternate ability wheel with this build. In case I do get caught, I have health, overpowered abilities, and the battle cry of Ares. By turning on the battle cry of Ares, this allows me to get in the last little bits of hits and kill someone that's attacking me while also not dying. Because of the 100% damage and 25% health cap, this ability helps with that if you get caught off guard. And then finally on the hunter side, I use devastating shot and multi shot shot here. Even though the hunter damage is not super high on this build, with the fanged bow, you can send out several multi shots and still deal a significant amount of damage to people, especially if you can position yourself well using the Shadow of Nyx ability. Alright, let's look at the masteries. On the assassin tree, I put 8 points into assassin damage, most of my points into crit chance while full health, and crit damage while full health to again increase the opportunity of critting with rush assassination and regular assassination and the damage they do and then I increase eight points into damage while full health and then I put a couple points into adrenaline on assassination kill to get more adrenaline to use abilities and a couple points into movement speed while crouching the reason I did this is because you're gonna be crouching when you're invisible and if you can boost that a little bit more you move a lot quicker throughout forts and then I put a couple more points into damage on elites and bosses so that I do more damage to mercenaries and other gold level enemies and then I put more points into damage when attacking from behind and the reason is because of all the attacking behind boosts and because you're invisible you can position yourself so that when you attack someone you're always behind them and you're dealing a significant amount of damage to them when you do that lastly on the warrior tree I put a couple points into damage dealt restored as health this is optional because if I did get caught I want to be able to kind of get some health back with some quick dagger attacks. It's not vital, but I do have the extra ability points, so that's what I chose to do here. All right, let's get into the ratings for this build. For the overall set bonus, I give it a five of five. The ability to be invisible indefinitely without draining your adrenaline is incredibly fun and very useful for assassin playstyles. For a damage rating, I give it a five of five. Because of that invisibility and the damage from behind, you're able to position yourself to deal as much damage as you possibly can with crit damage and other things like that. For a defensive rating, I give this a 2 of 5 because I would give it a 1 of 5, but due to the mixture of invisibility and vanish, you're able to put yourself in a position where you don't really need to be defensive, and it's not necessarily a requirement of this build, but it is 
very, very vulnerable. If you do get caught, your chances of dying on Nightmare are extremely high. For utility, I give this a 5 of 5. There's two adrenaline on assassination kill boosts with this build. So one assassination can get you upwards to four or five adrenaline points. So all you have to do is single assassinate a few small characters and fill your entire adrenaline bar. And a full adrenaline bar lets you take on a lot of enemies. For the fun to play, I give this a 5 of 5. Like I said in the intro, this build is so fun to play. It gave me vibes of playing past Assassin's Creed games. If you're getting too used to the hunter or warrior playstyle and all the hand-to-hand -hand combat, playing with this set to clear a fort very silently is so much fun. I highly recommend it. So that gives this build an overall 4.4 of 5. It's really fun to play. Alright guys, that's the Pilgrim set. Like I said, this is an incredibly fun build to play. I highly recommend it. It's easy to acquire and I believe it's one of the stronger legendary sets for assassin playstyles. If you like the video, please remember to leave a like. Please remember to subscribe. I'd appreciate the support and if you love Assassin's Creed Odyssey content, please click that bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. I appreciate everything and leave in the comments if you feel like there's something off or maybe there's a variation you've done with this build. I'd love to hear from it. I'll be responding to all the comments so let me know. Thanks again and I'll see you guys next time.